So does the sponsor agree that the bill does require that the recipient be born in New York State? That's what the bill says. Would the sponsor continue to yield? Yes. Uh, it does, is the sponsor aware of any other awards uh, issued by New York State that are limited only to people uh, who were born in the state? Issued by New York State? Yes. I, I do not. Uh, there are no other awards in statute that I know of that uh, mm -hmm. require somebody to be born in New York State, but there could be in the future, or they may not be in the future. Senator but there Warren. are, as my point was, there are any number of honorariums and scholarships and so on across a wide range of platforms that have specific requirements attached to them in order to access those dollars. So um, this is just one, and as I said, it shall be permissible. It does not require uh, the arts to uh, release that money in that fashion. Senator Hoylman? Would the sponsor continue to yield? Yes. Sponsor continues to yield. So the sponsor agrees that the award is, is as I understand it, limited only to New York State natives. So, for example, an artist who was born in Pennsylvania, moved to New York City at age 21, he, he spent the next four decades painting, taking photographs, filmmaking, would, would he be eligible for this award? He might be eligible for some future award. Sponsor continue? Yes. So Andy Warhol would not be eligible for this Edward Hopper award. Uh, under this bill, uh, would the sponsor continue to yield? Sponsor yield? Yes. Yes. So just an example, uh, a painter who was born in Wyoming, uh, moved to Long Island, spent the better part of the rest of his life revolutionizing uh, a groundbreaking style of, of abstract expressionism art, would, would he be eligible for the award? No. Senator Hoylman? Sponsor continue to yield? Yes. Continues to yield? Uh, Jackson Pollock would not be eligible for this award. And then, uh, would the sponsor continue to yield? You're good. You're sponsor, good. Does the sponsor yield? Yes, I'd, I'd like to point out that the uh, Edward Hopper uh, Award, in Edward Hopper's name, again, goes to somebody who was born in New York, like Edward Hopper in Upper Nyack, who did all of his work here in New York State. That's why it bears his name. That's why the uh, parameters are put on this particular award the way they are. We could have the Andy Warhol Award, uh, and the New York State Council on the Arts might want to create that uh, down the road. Senator Hoylman? Do the sponsor continue to yield? Yes. Sponsor yields. And j just another example uh, or question. Uh, let's say that the, this artist was born in England, moved to the Catskills, embarked on an artistic career that is inextricably linked to New York's uh, Hudson River uh, Valley. Uh, would, would this individual be eligible for the award? Not for the Edward Hopper Award. <laughs> would the sponsor continue to yield? Does the sponsor continue to yield? Yes. Sponsor yields. Uh, so, uh, Thomas Cole, the founder Can of the I Hudson River the Valley. House, please? Thank you. Thomas Sarah Cole, the, Hudson, the founder of the Hudson River uh, Valley School, would not be eligible for this award. Uh, on the bill, Mr. President. Senator Hoylman on the bill. Thank you. My point is that we have uh, in New York State a number of uh, world-renowned artists, uh, Andy Warhol, Jackson Pollock, Thomas Cole, uh, none of whom happen to have been born in the state of New York, but are deeply intertwined and recognized uh, with the history and culture of New York. A two uh, suggests that uh, we should have an award uh, that uh, on its face excludes uh, individuals simply because of their birth uh, seems self-limiting, short-sighted, uh, and uh, would not, in my opinion, contribute uh, to what is the worthy goal of the Edward Hopper Award, which is to foster creativity and encourage fine arts. You know, Mr. President, uh, New York is the growth capital of culture. Um, according to a recent report, uh, the number of jobs in New York City alone uh, from 2003 to 2013 in the creative workforce uh, went from 7.1 percent in the nation to 8.1 percent. Um, we depend on culture and arts. Uh, 
not just because we like to look at beautiful paintings, but because uh, it's an attraction to the rest of the country and the world. We need to continue to attract talent in New York State, and by having great artists amongst us, that helps that cause. Uh, the other reason I think we should oppose this is that um, we have quite a tradition in New York of welcoming immigrants. And it's not just uh, non-native New Yorkers who have contributed in the artistic world, but in every facet uh, of our economy uh, and our lives. Uh, and um, I think, sir, that um, by limiting this award to native New Yorkers, uh, we don't recognize that. Um, there should be no non-native New Yorkers need apply rule uh, here or in any award that's given by the state of New York. Uh, it baffles me that we would shut out so many potential artists uh, who could apply uh, for the Edward Harper Award and at the same time create a disincentive for artists to move to New York. So I'll be voting in the negative. Thank you. Senator Hoyleman to be recorded in the negative. Are there any other members wishing to be heard? Seeing none, the debate is closed. The secretary will ring the bell. Sir Marcelino, you wish to be heard? Uh, yes, Mr. President. What I'd like to do is to take the vote on this particular bill and lay it aside temporarily. And when Senator Bonasek comes in, which he's on his way now, I'd like to take up Senate 5302 D for controversial debate. So I understand you, Senator Marcellini, you wish to lay this one aside temporarily as well? When we finish the debate on Senator Bonasak's bill, we're going to vote on all three bills in succession. So we will lay aside calendar number 1566 temporarily. We'll take up the next bill as soon as Senator Bonasak enters the room, which he has. Senator Bonasak, welcome. Secretary will read. Calendar number 1402 by Senator Bonasek, Senate Print 5302D, an act to amend the Racy Paramutual Wagering and Breeding Law. Senator Kruger. Thank you, Mr. President. If the sponsor would please yield for some questions. Will the sponsor yield? Yes, Mr. President. Sponsor yields. Can the sponsor explain to me how this bill actually is constitutional? Of course, that's easy. Uh, first of all, um, it is a game of skill. Uh, and once we establish it as a game of skill, and it's not gaming, uh, therefore, it's not gaming. 
not gambling. And let me uh, continue, if I may. Um, uh, may I, may oh, continue oh, the sorry. answer? Yes. Yeah. Article 1, Section 9 of the New York State Constitution prohibits gambling, except for the following. We know charitable gaming. We know the state lottery. We know horse betting and casinos. However, the bill does not require a constitutional amendment as it provides legislative findings that Texas Hold'em and Omaha Hold'em are games of skill, not chance, and therefore not gambling on the New York State Constitution. Senator Kruger. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes, of course. Sponsor yields. Thank you. Um, does the sponsor have an opinion on the constitutionality of this from the State Attorney General? I don't think we do. Senator no, Bosak? We, we don't need it. The answer is no, because in our opinion, it wasn't needed. Mr. President, if the sponsor would yield, please. Yes. Sponsor yields. Okay. A section of the bill, let's see, subdivision, it's section two, page seven in my printout, section two, subdivision one, section 22.5 of the penal law would be amended to read as follows. It lists a contest of chance, means any contest game gaming scheme or gaming device in which the outcome depends in a material degree upon an element of chance, notwithstanding that skill of the contestants may also be a factor. So the words in a material degree are removed and the word predominantly is added. Does the sponsor have any concern that changing penal law and the definition of gaming will result in prosecutors not being able to go after many other kinds of gaming or gambling in the state that aren't recognized as legal. We've had this in the law since 1905. 1905. So might the sponsor share my concern that removing it from the law would actually open us up to many other kinds of gaming activity suddenly being interpreted as not illegal? No. Three Senator Kruger. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor, would you continue to yield? Yes. Uh, I, I will. Thank course. you. Sponsor yields. Thank you. On the bill, I don't agree with the sponsor's analysis. I do think it opens us up to new language where prosecutors may not be able to go after backroom, um, illegal gambling, other forms of poker games, etc. Now, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. Sponsor yields. Thank you. How many other states currently have approved online poker? Three. Uh, Delaware. New Jersey, Nevada. New Jersey and uh, Nevada. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor will continue to yield. Yes. Sponsor yields. How did the sponsor calculate that it should be 11 companies and a $10 million license fee for each? What was the basis of that? Uh, what motivated that was that um, the Racinos and Casinos all have given us a letter of support uh, for online gaming uh, and that it would have to be at mortar and brick operations. Um, so uh, that's how we arrived at the 11 licenses. Uh, each license, uh, each operator that wanted to have a platform for online gaming would have to locate it at a casino um, and pay the $10 million for a 10-year period. Uh, in addition, it's anticipated that from online gaming, and this is just 
information we've gotten from Caesars and MGM when they did it in Vegas, anywhere from $33 million to $45 million the first year, and that would go be earmarked for education. In addition, uh, every Racino would take, as part of the platform, uh, part of that action. So they would be making money themselves, uh, and then there's a tax of 15%. Now, what inspired us to do this, we know that there are illegal online gaming operations going on in the state of New York. And by passing this legislation, we could then regulate it, we can monitor it, we could put consumer protections in, and we can raise money for education. That was the motivation to do this, and job creation. Because every one of these platforms of online poker located at a casino will result in more jobs in the state of New York. Three, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. I will. Sponsor yields. So I believe the sponsor just answered that the only companies that would be allowed to apply for the 11 licenses are the 11 casino, racino licensees in the state of New York already? Did I understand? Uh, the, the short answer is yes, but as a practical matter, what happens, like happened in New Jersey, is that, let's say, a, a Vegas company wants to get involved, so they form a partnership with an existing, uh, in this case, Racino, and then they would be, they would have part of that enterprise. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue yes. to yield. The sponsor yields. So, because I'm afraid I've been confused. So who is applying for the license? The casino or some partnership they join with someone else who well, doesn't currently have first a of all, we know York. under this bill, yeah. the Racinos are the prime applicant to apply for the license, okay? Um, we don't know yet uh, if other interests outside the state of New York will come and want to partner with the Racino. But we are giving priority uh, to a New York uh, gaming operation that now provides close to $900 million a year for education. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to Yes, yield. the sponsor yields. So we would license said casino. They might go into their own separate business deal with someone else who doesn't already have a license to do any kind of gambling in New York State. Would the state of New York have the right to say, we think that's a bad actor. We don't want you to go into business with X company, even though we've given you a license to run online, online poker. The Gaming Commission would review all those applications. Be the determining factor. Three, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Sponsor yields. So in certain other states, there's been language of, within their legislation about what they refer to as no bad actor clauses in their statutes so that companies who have been found to be bad actors in gambling could not do business in their state. I can't find that clause in this bill. Can the sponsor direct me to it? Um, I, I don't think you're giving enough credit to the Gaming Commission. Um, they will review the eligibility of any outside applicant. They will look at deep pockets. They will look at uh, prior experience uh, in whatever else they've been involved in, especially you know if there was a casino from a Vegas interest. And most of the interest, uh, if it's going to come, is going to come from uh, the heavyweights from Vegas wanting to get involved in the New York market.
agree, Mr. President, that the sponsor would continue to yield? Yes. The sponsor yields. So if I understood the sponsor's previous answer to my question, the state wouldn't have the authority to say no casino X, even though we've licensed you to be one of the 11 online poker companies in New York State, we wouldn't have the authority to say, and you cannot go into business with, for example, Amaya, a company which is facing serious charges from the Quebec securities regulators at this time. Where in this bill does it ensure that our state of New York could stop the 11 licensed casino poker holders from going into business with bad actors? They would review all the applications for a partnership agreement with any out-of-state or out-of-country concern, for that matter, uh, that wants to uh, have an agreement with an existing racino. Three, Mr. President, if the sponsor will continue to yield. Yes. Sponsor yields. And they would have the power to pull the license if they didn't like the proposed partners? They would have the power to say no. We're not going to allow you to proceed with this partnership. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes. Sponsor yields. So technically, they're 10 year licenses with a cost of $10 million, but we could pull that license at any time. For what basis? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, could you please uh, repeat that question, uh, Senator Kruger? As I read the bill, there'll be 11 companies who can get 10 year licenses that they're paying $10 million um, to receive the license. Can we, the state of New York, pull that license at any time for any reason? And what are those reasons? You, think, you mean if things ever went bad, uh, can, can that be irrevocable? Or can that be revocable during the 10-year period? Is that your question? Yes. OK. Um, I'm reading now on page five, uh, item six. Any person found suitable by the commission may be issued a license as an operator or significant vendor. In determining suitability, uh, the commission shall consider factors it deems relevant in its discretion. Person of good character, you know, when I say person, it could be company. Uh, honesty, integrity, uh, prior activities, criminal records, pose a threat to the public interest or the effective regulation and control. Um, so uh, in, in my opinion, uh, they could at any time, if they feel, uh, if they see these factors of suitability going bad, like you say, a bad actor, I say they have the power to step in and uh, make suggestions uh, to correct the problem. You think they can revoke it? The sponsor, oh, I'm sorry. Take a step further. I, I believe they'll have the power to revoke it also. When you accept a license, you say, I'm going to apply by the rules of the Gaming Commission and the regulations. And if they violate those rules, they're going to put their license in jeopardy. Okay. You, Mr. President, if the sponsor will continue to yield. Yes. The sponsor yields. Thank you. So as I'm hearing the sponsor, he's making the argument that the commission would have the right to pull license because the section of the law he just read is the section of the law the applicant is supposed to meet the standards of. But as he just described in an earlier answer to a question, that applicant may go into future business deals with companies who are not partners with them at the time that they file for the license. So I might be, name a casino or casino. Tioga Downs. I might be Tioga Downs. I apply for a license. I don't have partners at that time, but I later on can bring in partners to the online poker business, and those partners might not meet the standards of the state for being 
um, good actors or in the case of the language, um, not bad actors. So the sponsor continues to make the presentation that after the licensing of the company, the commission would still have the authority to pull the license if they went into business with other actors that you thought were a problem. Suitability. In other words, they always have to comply with the standards and the regulations and the consumer protections. And all of the items uh, uh, that we list, uh, such, you know, the character, deep pockets, no criminal record, et cetera, et cetera. That's an ongoing review for any new player during a 10-year term. Uh, just as a practical matter, I don't see many outside interests coming in uh, and, and partnering necessarily with the Racinos. I think they're going to like that business themselves, and they're not going to need partners. For you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yeah. Yes. Sponsor yields. Thank you. So the sponsor, in describing the scenario in several other states, talked about the money going to education. Is the money from the licensing or the state's share of the take from the profits required to go to education in this bill? License fee total of $110 million goes to the general fund. Uh, the proceeds, the 15% uh, off the uh, online gaming would go to education. Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue to yield. Does the sponsor yield? Uh, let, me, let me take that back. Let me, let me retract that answer. Mm -hmm. The money for the online gaming would go in the general fund, both the 15 percent and the license fee. However, we, in the state, could tap that money for education if we're so inclined. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue yes. to yield. Yes. The sponsor yields? Yes. Thank you. So the sponsor has answered my question. The money does not go into education. It's true. Anytime there's money in the general fund, we might use some of it for education, but there's no requirement that this be supplemental money for education from this kind of gaming. That, that's correct. Through you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yield. Yes, I will. Sponsor yields. Is there anything in this bill that prevents internet online poker websites from using computer programs to represent human players by computer, i.e. poker bots, which can be programmed to, for optimal play and to increase the amount the human players are actually betting. Is there anything in the law that prevents that from taking place? The bill prohibits the use of those bots. Can you find me the section, please? Excuse me, through you, Mr. Yeah. President. Can you find me the section that prohibits um, poker bots or computer generated? Okay. Sure. Page 6, line 18, uh, D as in dense. Uh, appropriate safeguards to ensure to a reasonable degree of certainty that the interactive gaming is fair and honest and that appropriate measures are in place to deter, detect, and to the extent reasonably possible to prevent cheating, including collusion and use of cheating devices, including use of software programs, sometimes referred to as bots, that make bets or wages according to algorithms. For you, Mr. President, the sponsor would continue to yes. yield. Yes. Sponsor yields. Yes. How will we, the state of New York, have access 
to the computer systems of the companies doing business with the licensees to make sure that that's not happening? The Gaming Commission has to approve the platform uh, that is uh, put forth to make sure that those kinds of devices are not included in the platform in any way. Yields. Yes. Sponsor yields. I appreciate the sponsor's answers. While it's always, it's difficult to monitor computerized businesses because they don't have a nexus necessarily in the state of New York. They are somewhere on servers, in the ether, in the cloud, you're going online. How will the state of New York be able to continuously access and regulate that these aren't added to the system. Will we have? Will it have to be open source software? Will it have to be open source to the gaming commission regulators? Uh, first of all, uh, that's a good question, and I like the depth of your question. The gaming commission has to have access to all the software. When we went to New Jersey uh, and we met with the gaming regulators. All the software had to be presented to them and be approved by them uh, before the platform could be set up. And, and you realize with this online poker, uh, they now have the technology to identify every person that's playing, has to be in the state of New York, has to be over 18 years of age, and they know where they are located. Uh, so uh, that is all built in, uh, in the technology. Through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor will continue to yield. Yes, I will. The sponsor yields. Okay. So we just had the discussion about bots being built in to advantage the company over the players. There's also a scenario, apparently, because this has been being done in other states and other countries, and illegally right here in New York State, a model where the online gambler believes that their opponents are all out there individually working off the same system they are, but in fact, there is collusion going on where multiple online players are actually physically together and colluding to win against the person sitting in their home playing. What in our law would prevent this kind of human collusion um, versus the bot collusion? Um, I think what we found out in Jersey is that they examine betting patterns and they also have the address of where these bets come from. And they're, they become pretty expertise uh, to detect, uh, you know, the, the things you're speaking about uh, to try to prevent that collusion from happening. Three, Mr. President, the sponsor will continue to yield. Yes. Sponsor continues to yield. When the sponsor says address, does the sponsor mean IPS? address for the I computer. Do. I do. But in fact, in the example I just gave, it could be four people with their laptops sitting in one room versus colluding versus the other players somewhere believing they had a fair shot at winning when in fact there was collusion going on. How would we track that? Because the IPS for the this, the same computer, it would There's still... four computers in the same room. Four laptops it would sitting together. As, as I you, understand it, it would still be the IPS address. Joe? Sure. Yeah, it would still be the... I think that would only be true if they were all on the same wireless network, not if they were... My understanding is you can use, the, you can use this, these games a cell phone, a smartphone, an iPad, a laptop computer. So 
Senator Kruger, are you on the bill or are you asking a question? I'm asking a question for you, Mr. President. Since that's my understanding of how it happens, I don't understand the sponsor's answer that they would be able to track by address. Senator Bonasek, can you clarify your answer? Yeah. Uh, there's still, uh, Senator Kruger, they're still going to analyze the betting patterns. Um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the trust of many of your questions uh, seem to be that uh, how do we get rid of um, the cheats or those that want to beat the system on online gaming. And uh, what I'm suggesting to you is that the gaming regulations are tight. They monitor, they regulate, uh, they do talk to uh, people in New Jersey uh, to see, so they get up to speed and do it efficiently uh, if and when this were to proceed. Uh, but I believe it's a very insignificant uh, portion of online gaming that you're concerned about, and it doesn't go to the trust of whether or not online gaming is something that deserves merit or not. And I, I don't mean to demean your path of questioning, but uh, you know, I would probably have to have technology people come in here that have worked with this stuff more, more intelligent than I to try to answer your questions maybe with perhaps more clarity. For you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue yes. to yield. Yes. Sponsor continues to yield. Thank you. I think the sponsor is getting at some of the concerns I have with online gaming, which is it's a whole new world of transference of your money to someone out there. It's not bricks and mortar. When a, with a bricks and mortar gambling arrangement, there are people walking around you can theoretically see what's going on, um, while here it's all on a computer or a phone through the internet. And so there has been some research raising questions about um, that with internet access to computer gambling, the opportunity for fraudulent activity is enormous. And the ability for someone who may be defrauded for getting resolution to the problem is extremely difficult. So if the sponsor would continue to yield. I, I, I would, and there are 11 other states that this is pending in. Okay. Sponsor continues to yield. Under this law, if I chose to participate in online poker, and at some later date it was discovered that in fact that company, whoever it was, or their subsidiary, or their contracted, I don't know, online, whomever, this is that bonded, is it? had in fact been defrauding players, would the state make good to the players who were defrauded? Could the state make the companies make good to the defrauded players for their loss of Bets? Uh, Senator Kruger, uh, there was incidents back in 2011 where this actually happened, where uh, an internet poker, uh, they tapped the money, the bets, and took it away, and the U.S. Attorney General moved in and created a settlement of about $750 million and returned the money. As we go forward with this online gaming, the money has to be segregated and escrowed in an escrow account. It cannot be commingled with any other operating expenses of the vendor. Like an attorney escrow. Yes, I understand. Like a vendor's escrow account which would be monitored to ensure that that happens. That's one of the consumer protections of, of this legislation that may not exist with the illegal online stuff going on. Through you, Mr. President, if the sponsor would continue yes. to yield. 
Sponsor continues to yield. A common pattern to draw people into playing online poker and other online gaming uh, activities is to offer free-to-play versions of the game, which of course then get people comfortable playing before they start the real betting, can get young people not legally eligible to play involved in the gaming. Is there anything in this bill that would prevent these licensees from offering free-to-play versions? You have to be 21 in order to play online gaming. You have to verify uh, with the uh, applicant that uh, they do a background check. They have to prove that they are 21. And um, so anyone under 21, uh, sh uh, you know, will not have access to play this game unless they have an adult in the room and they're, you know, telling the adult to bet for me. But as a practical matter, anyone under 21 cannot play. 